Welcome to our past examination go through and this question is all about the adjusted present value or APV. So we have revised the APV calculation to be quite different from the NPV. Because for the NPV calculation, the, the discount rate that we normally choose will be the weighted average cost of capital. Of course, sometimes in the question that the uh, business may be entering into the new industry, uh, we need to adjust the business risks in the discount rate. However, for APV, we are particularly talking about where the financial risk of the project will change as a result that the company undertaking that project and the business financial risk will change. And therefore, when we are applying that discount rate, we cannot simply discount it at the weighted average cost of capital. But instead, we may discount the base case NPV, which means the operating cost flows using the cost of equity, which is ungeared, and the financing cost flows at risk-free rates or the yield, okay? So we separate the cash flows into the operating and financial cash flows and we apply different discount rates on top of that. And this is what I mean by the APV. Now firstly, let's see then. We are given a 25 marker question for this particular one. Part A is to calculate the APV, correcting any errors in MPV calculations above. And conclude, okay, there will be one mark for that. You need to say a simple sentence. If the APV is more than zero, we are going to be accepting that project. Okay, so we are required to show all relevant calculations. That's all, absolutely fine there in the spreadsheet. Part B, we need to show this in the words processor and to comment on the corrections made to the original MPV estimates and explain the APV approach, okay, including any assumptions made, right, so two requirements there, and we're given 10 marks, okay, you know what I mean, I need to make 10 sentences in this particular paper. Of course, when commenting on the APV or MPV, uh, so we comment on three things, the number of years, relevant cash flows, and the discount rate may change, okay, so tailor these to the exam question, that will be absolutely fine there. Uh, additionally, the disadvantage of APV would be uh, a choice in selecting the discount rate when discounting the financial cash flows that we need to consider. Okay, let's jump in to the case information firstly and to see what is going on. Now, you are recently commenced uh, working for the B company and are reviewing a four-year project, okay, which the company is considering for investment, okay, so spending money out in other words. The project is a, in a business activity which is very different from the company's one, okay, so which means there will be a change in the business risk. Well, we are given the following MPV estimates, okay, so we've got the revenue starting in year one, 23.03, followed by 36.6 and so on. We also told about the direct project costs of 13.82 and 21.96 and so on. Oh, we've got the interest, okay? You see the interest. This is incorrect. It cannot bring that interest there because the interest would have been considered when we discount the project's cash flows. And this is why interest cannot be shown separately as the cash outflow here. I pay taxes on that and absolutely fine there. We also have got the investment and sale which means at the year start we spend 38 million dollars and at the end of year four we get four million dollars back as the residual value. We discount at seven percent there, the discount rate seven percent. As we can say, okay, firstly the 7% the told in the question is all about the real cost of capital. Okay, now in the notes number four, as you can see in the note number four, 
real cost of capital. Do you know what I mean? Well, there will be the money discount rate and the real discount rate. Real discount rate is not considering any inflation at all. Real did not include inflation. However, the nominal, which means the money rate of 11%, has included inflation. And this means that all the cash flows calculations will exclude inflation. And therefore, later on, when we use the APV calculations, we will need to bring the inflation back to the cash flows. It's a very important thing that we need to remember that. Right, from the MPV calculation, we can see it's negative. So which means that we should not accept the project from the financials point of view. But there will be a couple of notes here. Since the real cost of capital is used, neither revenue nor the direct project cost is being inflated. Okay, so we need to apply the 8% of the inflation to revenue and 4% to the direct project cost. And also, the project requires an initial investment of 38 million. Of this, 16 million relates to plant machinery to be sold for four after taking any taxation and inflation impact into account. Okay. Uh, now, this uh, simply means that the uh, <coughs> will be correct for the initial investments made by the examiner. We also told the number three tax allowable depreciation is available. 50% for the first year for plant machinery, 25% of the reducing balance basis uh, from the second year onwards. And we also have got a balancing adjustment, okay, related to a plant machinery. And the company pays 20% taxes on the annual taxable profit, and no tax allowable depreciation is available on the remaining investment assets, and they will have a new value at the end of a project. Okay, that's absolutely fine though. So we need to adjust for that capital allowances later on. We also told about the interest based on the normal borrowing rate of 150 basis point. So this is for the government yield rate. Uh, now, this means that if I were to borrow some money from the bank, I will be charged additional of 1.5%. Okay? Because what do I mean by basis point? It's just to be 150, divide this into 100, plus a percentage next to that. Number five, uh, number six, at the beginning of each year, the company will provide working capital investment of 20% of the revenue. Okay, so we take 20% times by the revenue, and this stands for uh, the additional monies that we need to put in. And all of the capitals will be released at the end of a project live. Okay, so set put working capital adjustment, there'll be two marks in this particular Exam. Now the working capital depreciation has not been taken into account in the MPV calculations and uh, it's not a cash flow and, 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 and not return at the end of the year for the working capital so not included and this is absolutely wrong there so we comment on those later on we can say that to the examiner okay the examiner meets that but we need to correct that then. And so we are told about the finance cost issues as well, so we can consider the financial cost flows later on. And we also told about the equity beta and so on, we can later on calculate the discount rate. Okay. Now, uh, when we read through the case for the very first time, the next things that we need to do is to set up our pro forma answer, and then we're going to be reading the case for a second time and to insert the information in. Now, this question is all about calculating the APV. Uh, let's see then. This is the requirements part A. I'm okay, going to, to tell the examiner this is requirement part A, adjust the present value calculation. So firstly, we need to tell the examiner the base case MPV, okay, and the present value of the finance effect. We should tell the examiner about those. Okay. Again, words on the left-hand side and numbers on the right-hand side, which means the first and second column. Now, in, also, in order to compute the base case MPV, okay, so naming that again, okay, underlying this, and we've got three things, number of years, relevant cash flows, and discount rate, 
only reflecting the business risks. And so we've got a number of years. So we are told in this question we've got four years for project life and uh, um, year zero at the start. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. So uh, we've got uh, different stuff in there. So for example, we'll start with revenue and direct project costs and so on. We arrive at profit and so on. So we've got sales revenue that we need to adjust later on and direct project costs that we need to adjust for that later on. At the same time, uh, before we consider any taxes, usually I would like to I would like to use the profit to calculate the taxes by deducting less capital allowances. And later on we adjust for that, later on we will plot the capital allowances back. Okay. And this will gives us profit and we can pay taxes on that, less taxes. And after adjusting for taxes, we will be adding back the capital allowances. We also told uh, about the uh, investment and sale. Okay, now it's the investment and sale. And also we are told about the working capital, okay, uh, because as we can see, the working capital will be 20% of the anticipated revenue for the year. And also adjust for the working capital, this one, okay. So leave a few lines, okay, so we arrive at the undiscounted cash flows. And the discount factor, we will be applying uh, the... Uh, the discount rate only reflecting the business risk of a company and we've got the present value or you can, P, you can use PB for short okay it's entirely up to you though so uh, later on we will calculate the present value of the finance effect uh, if I were you I will put it on the right hand side okay put it on the right hand side if you like So firstly, we've got base case MPV, and then next one, we've got the present value of the finance effect. Okay, we'll see a couple of issues. For example, subsidy uh, in the APV calculation will certainly come up, and uh, there might be issue costs as well. Uh, so later on, we'll see that. So firstly, let's calculate the revenue firstly. Okay, so the revenue will be inflated at 8%. So in this particular exam, if you're not sure what figures to put in, so for example, you're not sure how to adjust for that 8%, no worries. Uh, you can insert this number in whatever way you want, okay? As long as you include that into your calculation, so uh, it's very likely that you will get reasonable marks in doing that. So make sure that we, you will utilize all these figures in this particular question here. That's because we are told that all figures are, are in million dollars, okay? Now, all in million dollars, we'll say to the examiner, right, this will be in million dollars, okay? So, dollars, million, okay, that'll be absolutely fine now. Now, revenue, firstly, will be 23.03 at the end of year one, and that means they'll be inflated by 8% for the first year, so, equals to 23.03 and times by 1.08 okay for a power of 1 and that becomes 24 and so on okay so if I were you I would like to round these numbers by reducing the number of decimal places into 2 and that would be much better now if I were you again, I would like to copy these, okay, so uh, copy times 1.08 for the power of how much, because when we are inserting the numbers later on, yes, we can directly copy that. Now, this one equals to 
36.6 okay, for a power of 2, and that becomes 42.96, 69, sorry. Year 3 then, 49.07, okay, for a power of 3, and for the 4th year, 27.14, For a power of four, okay, one top say percent of the inflation rate for a power of four years, that becomes 36.92. How about for direct project costs though? Direct project costs is you can say that the inflation that we need to apply will be 4% now, okay? So direct project costs, 13.82, okay? So equals to minus, remember that, okay? 13.82 times by 1.04 because we are applying that 4% of the inflation rate for a power of 1. Okay, so that would be minus 14.37 there. Okay, just copy that. Okay, in the second year, 21.96 for two years. For the third year, 29.44. For the third year, 33.12 in our words. For the final year, 16.28. Okay, that would be minus 19.05. The next one would be to calculate the capital allowances. So in this particular paper, there will be two to three marks to calculate the capital allowances because a bit tricky, uh, such as what we've seen in the FM paper in the past. So I'd like to start a working one for this, okay, in the exam, just to open the working and to uh, make sure that you show all the calculations uh, that the steps involved to the examiner and you will get reasonable and beautiful marks related to those, okay. Now, working one is related to capital allowances. To calculate the capital allowances, I would like to use a few columns here. So we've got number of years, we've got cash flows, okay, and to see the capital allowances there. Make it, okay, align it to the right. Now, we've got year, year zero, year one, okay, year two, year three, and year four, okay. Just leave a line for each and every year. Now, uh, when we are calculating a capital allowance system, uh, because as we can say, the project requiring the initial investment of 38, however, $60 million related to plant machinery to be used, uh, seems to me, in this project, which can be sold for four at the end of the final year. And... Um, Therefore, we we'll need to consider the capital allowances, which means the tax depreciation will be 16 minus 4, which has to be $12 million, is the total depreciation expenses spread over four years. Now, at the start, that will be 16 million, okay, because we need to say that this will be all in million dollars, okay, all in million dollars. Now, $16 million, okay, uh, at the end of first year, because we need to uh, subtract the capital allowances on that, because according to a rule, is that tax allowable depreciation is available for the very first year at 50%, okay, so capital allowances will be minus 50% and times by the value before, and that becomes 8 so at the end of the first year, we've got the uh, tax written down value to sum these figures all together, and that becomes eight, okay? So copy this in, the capital allowances, because from the year two onwards, there would be 25% thereafter. So E equals to minus 25% and times by the value of eight. So capital allowances here, 
the tax uh, the tax written down value will be sum okay of six. I copy this in and then minus twenty five percent again times by six. So at the end of the year three, we sum all of these figures all together, okay, of four point five. However, because we are told that there will be a residual value of 4 at the end of the fourth year, we will need to make, okay, we will say that this will be 4 at the end of the fourth year for a tax written down value. So this will be the residual value. Okay, it's just to be the tax written down value. And therefore we can work out the balancing allowance to bring the 4.5 into 4, which means we need to minus 0.5, okay? So you can bring the 4.5 into 4 there. So all we can do is to copy these, okay, into our calculation there, okay, into our calculation above. So uh, we would say that capital allowances are going to work in one in the year number one. Uh, that would be minus eight. So equals to minus and minus uh, equals to minus eight. Okay, and then this equals to the sale uh, B twenty seven in our words minus two, and this will be equals to minus one point five, and then equals to minus not point five there. Okay, so underlying this, we can calculate the profit by summing all these all together. And then to extend these, okay, up to the sale number four there. Right, the next things that we're going to be doing would be to compute the taxes. So how much tax that we need to pay for there? How much tax that we need to pay for? We are told we need to pay for 20% of the taxes, and we are also told that the, in the final sentence that both companies pay tax in the same year when profit arises. Okay, it's not deferring any taxes at all. So 20%, okay, so paying tax for the year ones that we make profit of these, and then uh, we pay taxes or not. So we pay tax minus equals to minus this times by 20%, okay? So simply adjust for this, okay? Just to be the same there, just to extend this and that'll be absolutely fine there. So adding back the capital allowances again, so which means minus this, okay? And we extend that and these will be the figures that we are interested in. How about the investment in sale? So we are told that in the calculation, we invested, okay, 20% that we've done with that. Uh, the wrong calculation has been shown by the examiner, and uh, therefore I need to correct it. So at the, uh, at the year start, we pay 38. At the end of year four, we get four back, okay? So we pay 38, we get $4 million back, okay, at the end of year four. How about for working capital adjustment there? Okay, because we are told about the working capital. At the beginning of each year, the company will provide working capital of 20% of anticipated revenue. Okay, so therefore, we'll need to start working for that. So, because there will be two marks for this adjustment. Uh, a pretty tough, from my perspective, okay, if you're encountering the MPV, APV, or perhaps the international investment appraisal questions in this particular paper, highly likely they need to adjust for the working capital. And therefore starting a working capital at the end of the uh, spreadsheet, okay, showing that clearly to the examiner, and this will be w related to the working capital adjustment that we need to tell the examiner, okay, about the working capital adjustment there. So the format for this adjustment will be, firstly, the number of years, because that will be a four-year life project, so zero, one, two, three, and four years life of the project. The next things that we're going to be doing will be to look at 
the revenue and then by timing by 20% and showing the difference to be included into our APV calculation, that would be absolutely fine now. So firstly, will be our sales revenue. Okay, so we simply copy these all together. Okay, just copy these all together. Okay, just to copy these all together. So we need can equals to this. Okay, and then extend these. Uh, so this will be the figures that we extend. The working capital requirements. Okay, will be twenty percent. Is that twenty percent? If my memory serves me right, yes. 20% of the anticipated sales in each and every year. And that means we simply apply that 20%, okay, I love that Excel function. So equals to 20% times by this, oops, times by this. Okay, and we extend these, okay, that will be absolutely fine now. So reduce them to be two decimal places. The third one is that the working capital uh, adjustment that we need to put in into, that, into the APV calculation later on. Okay? So all we can do is to use the shortcuts. Okay? I will use, because at the year, uh, at the year start, uh, I will need to buy the inventories in advance to support the requirements in the year one. So I will use, because year zero will be nothing there, so I will use zero and minus the year one figure, okay, to give me the requirements in the year one. How about the year one? The requirements will take the 4.87 minus 5.80, uh, 5, uh, 8.54, okay, and that being the case, require 3.56 in there. How about in the year two? Okay, I use this minus this. How about in year three? I use this and minus this. Okay, so how about in year four? So all we can do is to summarize all we've seen, okay, here. And, and, and that would be absolutely enough there. Because as we can say, year four after year four would be zero, right? So we use this at minus zero, okay? And that would be 7.38 there. Okay, now, I'd like to copy this into my working, the working capital investment, okay, uh, working capital adjustment there. It'll be a standardized working in each and every sitting exam. So equals to this one, okay, press enter, and then extend these, yeah, and that'll be absolutely fine, showing the working number two there. So after you've done all these calculations, the next thing, there'll be no further adjustments that you, uh, you are required. Okay, we copy this uh, in, and then we underline these. So the cash flows, we simply, by summing all these cash flows all together, uh, starting with profit, sorry, starting with profit. Okay, now, extending these, up to the end of year four, and that's all we can do. And then, yes, reduce the decimal places to make it look more beautiful, okay? To make it look less complicated for markers to mark your script, okay? Very, very important professional skill that you need to master. However, in calculating the APV or uh, the base case MPV, which, we, which means included in the adjusted present value calculation, you have to make sure that when we are choosing a discount rate, it should be the discount rate only reflecting the business risks. And therefore, it's 9 out of 10, you have to start with the working free to work out the discount rate, okay? Now, working free though, discount rate, okay? Only reflecting that business risks. Now, what sort of things that we need to bear that in mind there? So firstly, the company uses either the nominal cost of capital 11% or real cost of capital 7%, okay, and uh, the inflation has been stable at 4% for a number of years, but we don't care about them because we need to work out the discount rate only reflecting the business risk. 
Now, we are told about in the final two paragraphs here, especially for this paragraph, the, the company has been identified as the company called the L company because uh, we are looking at the new project and because we are considering in a new industry because the project is very different from our company's current line of the business and therefore we are looking for a new project and we have selected a target company called L company operating in the same line of the business as that project is considering. So which means that we will use that L company's information um, to take into account its own, uh, take into account only for its business risk related to that industry. Okay, so that's our aim. Now, the L company is financed by $40 million shares trading at $3.2 each. Now, we can calculate something called the value of equity. We take that $40 million and times by $3.2 here. Now, the way that we calculate the business value, okay, because in this question is combined with the business valuation already. Now, this way to calculate the value of equity, we are talking about the market capitalization way, okay? Of course, the biggest disadvantage for that would be the share price would change, would fluctuate quite a lot, so quite frequently, uh, and therefore we're not particularly sure at which point in time for the share price that we need to use and to estimate the value of equity here. However, because we are given that uh, the 40 million and 3.2 dollars of the share price, we can work out the value of equity directly. So the reason why I'm good, uh, why I'm good. Why I'm doing this is because we are given different formulae in this particular paper, especially firstly the CAPM formula and the asset beta formula. So we always ignore the uh, debt beta factor, we only consider the first half of that, which means related to equity. So we've got the value of equity here, we've got the value of debt and times by 1 minus tax rate, and times by the beta factor. And this will give me the asset beta, and that's all we can do. Now we compute the value of equity directly, but how about for the value of debt there? So if I were to say that, okay, $34 million debt, okay, but trading at per $100 only been $94, which means six, $6 decrease in value. So all we can do, yes, of course you can use the $34 million directly as the value of debt, but say that to the examiner as the assumption that you are using a book value. However, if I were you, I would like to use the market value of debt. So in other words, I would like to take that $34 million and to divide this into 100, and that gives me how many debts are in place, and times by $94 each, and this will give me the value of debt directly. We also told the equity beta is to be 1.5, okay, so this will be the equity beta of 1.5. We can de gear that 1.5 is the equity beta and to work out the asset beta. Asset beta only reflects the business risk. We are also told the risk free rate or we can call it as the yield on the government treasury bills 2%, okay, just to be a risk free rate. We are also told the market risk premium. Premium means the return from a market and to minus the risk free rate to be 8% there. We're also told about the tax rate, okay, so 1 minus tax rate will simply be 80% there. So you can incorporate all this information into your answer and just tell the examiner what would be the asset beta and you will be slotting that to the CAPM formulas to work out the discount rates here. The way I'm going to be using here would be this. Now, firstly, discount rate. I would like to work out the value of equity, the value of debt, and 1 minus tax rate, 
okay, tell the examiner about these variables and, and, and to insert them into the formulae. You also have got the equity beta, okay, uh, so don't be lazy, just type in the full name equity beta instead of that symbol, okay, because you can't type into that symbol in the exam. And you need to work out the asset beta. And then later on, you will need to slot that into the CAPM formula. Okay? Uh, you've got the risk free rate and RM minus RF, and then using CAPM, capital asset pricing models to compute the cost of equity. Okay? So, value of equity, okay, tell the examiner, you've got 40 million times by 3.2. So, 40 million times by 3.2. Okay. Just tell the examiner about that, and all in million dollars. How about for value of debt there? 34 million, divide this into 100 times by 94, okay? So 34 million, divide this into 100, and then times by 94. That becomes 31.96. 1 minus tax rate, okay, I remember it would be 20% tax rate. And equity beta is to be 1.5 there. Okay, now, reading the asset beta formula again by clicking on the formula, okay, and you see asset beta equals to value of equity, divide this into value of equity plus these, okay, now, equals to value of equity, divide this into the value of equity plus the value of debt times by 1 minus tax rate, okay? And also times by the equity beta value, B44. And that becomes 1.25 there, okay? Just to reduce the decimal places. The risk-free rate then, it totals about 2% and 8% for the premium. So 2% and 8% for a premium. So we compute the CAPM, which means the discount rate, equals the risk-free rate plus the beta factor and times by the risk premium. Let me check that again. 2% and 8%. equals to 2% and plus 1.25 and times by 8%. Okay. Now, put percentage next to that, it will be 12% that we are going to be using, okay, in our CAPM calculation there. So it would be 12%. And to discount it, for example, in the year one, there'll be one, okay? In year one, there would be one divided this into 1.12 for a power of one, okay? And then we'll copy that. For a power of two. For a power of three. And for a power of four. The present value though, we're going to be using the cash flows and times by the discount rate okay choose the decimal places underline these so finally the base case MPV will be to sum all these present values and that becomes 8.61 okay now base case MPV equals to 8.61 million dollars okay simple right okay the next things that we are going to be doing is the present value of the finance cash flows finance effects in other words so we are told about two things here, okay, for the further financial information. It is anticipated the project will be financed entirely by debt, 60% obtained 
from the subsidised loan scheme run by the government. So what do I mean by subsidised? Simply means the government will give us the lower interest rates loan, okay, which lends the money at a rate of 100 basis point below the 10-year government yield rate of 2.5%. So in other words, the 100 basis point will be uh, 1%, 1% below that 2.5%. So in other words, we are able to lend at 2.5% minus 1% at 1.5% now. Okay, so uh, that's why we can lend on 1.5%. So because we lend that money and we can save tax on the interest, okay, so we simply timing by the tax rate of 20% there. So uh, later on we also have got the issue costs attached to it. Uh, issue costs will be 2% of the gross finance required. Uh, the monies that we are going to be needed, okay, will be 42.97, including the initial investment of 38 and the working capital of 4.97. So in total, will be 42.97 there. The remaining 40% will be funded from the normal borrowing sources, okay, and uh, because nowadays what we are, are going to be doing is that uh, we need to uh, borrow at 4%. Why? Firstly, at the government yield of 2.5% plus 150 basis points, so plus 2.5% there, the normal borrowing rate will be 4%, okay? because the 2.5% will be the, the uh, government yield, which means the risk-free rate, and 1.5% will be reflecting as our risk premiums the bank is going to charge. And we need to borrow at 4% now, okay, for the remaining of 40%, okay? Now, what we need to do then, in calculating the present value of the finance effect, the type number one will be the subsidised loan. Subsidised loans will include two parts. Firstly, we need to calculate the present value of tax shield or tax savings on the interest. This will be the first part. The second part will be the present value of the subsidised loan net of tax. The reason why this will be a case is because uh, that we are lending money at a cheaper rate and this would be seen as the cost savings. Cost savings will be the benefit in, we need to pay tax on those benefits and this is why we need a debt of tax on that. Now, firstly, it's the present value of tax savings on interest, okay? Uh, we simply times by 20%, okay? So we use interest and times by 20%. However, by what amount, okay? So we open the bracket. First, we need to tell the examiner that there will be two parts here. 60% 60 of the uh, investments, we can obtain money from the government, with 40% uh, will be financed by our business. So for the total amount, or uh, the, the value will be 42.97 there, okay? So we directly say that it will be 42.97 uh, there for the initial investment. And with the 60%, we can obtain the interest at 1.5% only, and we save tax on that. Okay, times by 20% of the tax rate. And we also say that another 40%, which means 42.97, another 40% on that, and we need to obtain the uh, rate at 1.5% plus 2.5%, which means 4% now. And we save tax on 20% on that. Okay, so we can calculate the value here the cash flows in other words. In order to calculate the present value, okay, so this will be the cash flows, 
And also it calculates the present value because this is for lasting for four years and we need to apply the annuity factor. Annuity factor here, I would like to discount it at either the uh, risk-free rate or the yield from our debt. So as we can see, there, there, there will be a couple of uh, risk-free rates that we can choose. So for example, I can choose the 2% there, okay? The yield on the government treasury bills is 2%, okay? Uh, make my life that much easier. Yes, you can choose 2.5%. Alternatively, you can choose, but not told about the yield here. Oh, the yield will be 4%, right, okay? Uh, because that would be our normal borrowing rate. So it's entirely up to you, okay? Uh, you can choose the discount rate of 2%, okay? Or another risk-free rate of 2.5%. Alternatively, the yield of 4% is entirely up to you. I'd like to choose 2% there, okay? At 2% as the risk-free rate. Tell the examiner about your assumption in your calculation. That would be absolutely important there. The annuity factor for four years, okay, we check the annuity table in the exam by clicking on the annuity table of 2% for four years, 3.808. So you can calculate the present value by timing this all together. That would be 0.81, okay. Right, how about for present value of subsidised loan, net of tax? Uh, because for the cash flows, we need 42.97, and uh, how much savings that we can make? Uh, because initially, we need to borrow at 4%, but now it's only 1.5%. So we can enjoy the 2.5% of the benefit. Though. However, it's not the full 42.97 million dollars that we are going to be borrowing but only with 60 percent that we borrow from the government okay and because it's net of tax and we need to times by one minus 20 percent on that again we use the same discount rate of 3.808 extend this and this will give me the present value of 1.96 there Finally, we also have got the issue costs here, okay, the issue costs, uh, because we are told in the question that there will be 2% of the issue costs on the gross finance required. Now, what do I mean by gross finance? Because we uh, are going to be uh, taking out the uh, debt related to the full investment of 42.97 which means 100%. But if I were to undertake that, uh, take this money and, uh, and to deduct the issue costs from the 42.97, we can't get the full amount of 42.97. So which means that it's a mathematical problem. In other words, 100% minus 2% equals to 98%. And we need to get the 42.97 after subtracting the issue cost, which means the 42.97 standing for 98% of the money. So from this issue, what we can say is this, the cash flows will take 42.97, divide this into 0.98, and then we need to times by 2% of the issue cost there. So the cash flows will be 0 0.876939, okay. Uh, now, what we can do is to calculate the present value here. The present value for the issue cost, we don't pay the issue cost in each and every year. We just to pay the issue cost at the year start. And therefore, the discount rate, uh, yes, will be at 2%, but the discount factor at the year zero will be one. And therefore, the present value will be this times by that, okay. Now, we calculate all of these all together, okay. So the, in total, we sum these all together, and this will give me 3.66, okay. 
That's how we do it. Now, 3.66. Uh, however, the issue cost is not uh, plus, not 0.8. All we can do is to subtract it. Okay, so this would be 1.9 there. Now, slot that in. The present value of the finance effect, 1.9. So APV in total will be the sum of these two figures. This will be. $10.51 million. Of course, making a conclusion will be absolutely key. Okay, if you've seen your uh, answer, that uh, we will accept that project because the APV is positive. And for part boy, then, yeah, we correct it. So, for example, don't include interest and cash flows inflated. Uh, working capital investments needs to be uh, done. And we take the approach, for example, we separate the business risk and the financial risk and applying the different discount rate. And we also make certain assumptions. Uh, so, for example, uh, the working capital can be recovered at the end of the final year. And uh, we are assuming that the company, the target company's discount rates reflecting only the business risk and would be exactly the same as our project, but in effect, in practice, it may not be the case. Um, yes, uh, you can make certain assumptions to that. So make sure 10 sentences will earn you enough marks to pass this particular paper. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this section. and I'm going to stop this recording now, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.